The following video is brought to you in part by Yellow Jacket. 68 years of expertise built into every tool. Guys, we have an American Standard unit here at the old church for the sanctuary. So the compressor is not starting, so I'm going to take a look at the compressor, which is in this compartment, obviously. Jump things off down here to get things going, and we'll see what's up. So we're looking down inside the controls compartment here. We have the integrated furnace control. Here's our contactor. We're going to check our voltage at the contactor. Have a little bit of debris at the bottom of the hard start. Not necessarily an issue. A lot of rust here down here in the burner section. A lot of debris could stand to cleaning and probably a combustion analysis. But we're not doing that today because we're just checking the compressor to make sure it's going to start. Zero volts here. 248 volts and we're good to go there. I'm going to push the contactor down and see what happens here. Let's find ourselves a nice electrically resistant. No compressor. All right. So let's check the run capacitors first, which are going to be in this compartment, I believe. We'll move on from there. Our blower section has a nice plastic blower housing. So our run capacitors over there. Our fan motor capacitor. Nice, huh? No. No confusion there. I'm going to check and make sure we turn the power off at the disconnect right here. I'm going to check one more time. Make sure we have no power. We do not. All right. I'm going to give it a second for these capacitors to discharge on the module, the X13 motor. Even though I probably won't be touching that, I just want to safety first, guys. Safety first. I've taken the capacitor loose. Hard to reach here. I want to see what size it was anyway. It is 80 slash 5. I don't know if that's the original capacitor or not. It doesn't seem like that's the kind they put in there. Yeah, because there's a Gentech one over there. Got my plunger leads put together. Zero ohms mean the leads are connected. So I'm going to read some capacitance on this thing. There we are. Got everything hooked up there. We're good to go as far as capacitance there. Let's take a look at the wiring connections on the compressor to make sure they're all still connected and not burned off. Looking at our train compressor here. Took off the plug here. Put my leads one side of the meter here and one side on the other end of the wiring just to check the wiring all the way back to this point here. It's good. The compressor itself is good as far as how it's oming out. Nothing high, nothing disconnected. I'm going to go check that start capacitor, clip the resistor on it, and see if it's any good. If it's still good, then it looks like we just have a bad compressor here, not really trying to start or anything. So we'll check some startup amps on it. I didn't sense it trying to start by any sound, but we'll double check that as well. Checking our start capacitor. Plenty of juice there. We're supposed to be between 136 or 135 and 162 it looks like scroll compressor anyway so I would expect it to start especially after it was equalized I don't think there's any problem with it at all so we're gonna think for a second see if there's anything else I can check before I condemn this bad boy I can check and make sure voltage is getting to it over there that's about it if I have an acid test I'll do that as well but I don't think I have an extra one I think I used the last one of those so I'll go check and see I pushed the contactor down again, took a reading on the common wire inrush. This thing does have inrush, XTEC EX655, 169 amps, so it is lock rotor. I'm going to take a whack at it a couple times with my, with my lightweight sledgehammer. Guys, whenever you're troubleshooting your compressor, don't forget the most essential tool whatsoever. Now, is it a Reed Mega Ohm Meter? Nice, but not. Is it your trusty multimeter? No. It's your sledgehammer. That's what does the best. This unit right here, I can troubleshoot this whole thing with the sledgehammer. You don't believe me? <laughs> Tell you guys, if it were to actually start when I did this, you still probably want to replace it because there's obviously something going on in here. Maybe this is just because I'm sadistic. I'm going to try it anyway. Be a little tappy tappy. Free it up. Free up the bad boy. Someone's knocking. 
knocking on the door. She got nothing. Here's an interesting fact. We have a large section here. You now it's warmer. I, I just tried starting this thing a couple times. So I wonder. I mean, it's cool on top. Warm right here. And all the paint's missing. So you guys tell me what you think happened right there. Kind of curious. There's a couple scuffs where I hit it with a sledgehammer. Try to break it free because we have a lock rotor pulling about 170 amps. Do you think there's something happening down this part of the compressor? And if so, what's happening? I'm not an expert at the internals of all these compressors. But I know some of you guys out there slice them in half every single day, it seems like. So you tell me, what's going on here? Sporlin, creating products that provide solutions so that your air conditioning and refrigeration needs are not only met, but exceeded. Offer the highest quality products, innovative solutions, and unparalleled support in the market.